I think I'm going to have to start again. I'm going to do it very quickly. Okay. That uh, first of all, it's August 9th, and uh, I want to talk about that when I mentioned in the previous year that the world was 5,772 years old. Somebody brought in to me a printout which basically he claimed that the world was 15 billion years old. Actually, the person that brought it in claimed 15 billion years old. And he brought me a printout from the scientist uh, where he figures out through scientific and f and uh, he's also a physicist. Phys physicist? Physicist. 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 Okay, yeah. Th those two words, physicist and anthesis, I have a major problem with it. So let's just say he's a scientist, and um, and he proves by by uh, various Talmudic sources uh, that the uh, that the first six days of creation were of a different nature than the rest of the world. And basically, he makes the claim that the world is five thousand seven hundred and seventy-two years old. That's beginning from when man was created, which was on the sixth day. However, the first five days before that, it's different, and each one of those days, or maybe millions and billions of years, and he goes through his whole thing, and he makes all kinds of calculations, and uh, I'm not here to refute that, because I'm neither a, uh, a scientist, nor a Talmudic scholar, nor am I certainly a physicist, but uh, I think what what... He, that gentleman has done, he's not a rabbi that wrote that article, he's a professor. What that gentleman has done is really uh, put, 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 put himself in a position where almost anything in the Torah can be challenged. And uh, I think that it's important for us to realize that we don't need scientists to confirm what the Torah says. I've mentioned before that science is finally catching up to religion and everything that we've, that's in the Torah and everything that the Torah asks us to do, now scientists are finding out uh, that it is good for us to do it and there are, in fact, uh, physical benefits to many of our mitzvahs. The, the, the one that I always like to quote is that, you know, the Torah says that we have to circumcise uh, a newborn male at the age of at the age of eight days, and the question has always been, you know, why the eight day? And they give all kinds of esoteric reasons for it. Uh, seven is nature, eight is above nature, and stuff like that. Scientists have recently discovered. When I say recently, I, I mean in the last fifty years or so, uh, after I was circumcised, that. Uh, on the eighth day, uh, the human body produces a certain clotting factor, which is at its maximum point. It's not there on the seventh, it's not there on the ninth day. And on the eighth day, the blood clots the best, and that's why, uh, that may be one of the reasons mm -hmm. why uh, we do it on the eighth day. But it's another case where science is justifying something in the Torah. We don't need that. It's nice, it's cute, it's interesting. But we don't need that to happen. But what we certainly don't need to happen is for us to use Torah to prove scientists. We don't have to prove anything scientists have said. Scientists, for the most part, are work with theories mm -hmm. and conjecture. Uh, they make things fit as they want. Uh, you know, and. Uh, and the, to and the Torah starts Bereshis Bar Elokim Shemayim Soretz that the, the world was created uh, the first day. Uh, it goes on to say what would happen on the first day, the second day, and so on. And Ein Hamikra Yotze Midei Pshuto. That means Rashi uses this terminology a lot. That you can come up with all kinds of beautiful and interesting uh, commentaries on the Torah, but nevertheless. The simple, plain uh, interpretation of the Torah also has to, not also, is 100% true, and, and it has to uh, fit with whatever you're going to comment on it. Mm -hmm. So you can't change the, uh, 
the uh, literal translation of the Torah on your own. Uh, the sages later on have sometimes done that, and there are specific reasons for that. The coffee spoken for? The, no, the coffee is yours. I bring two coffees, one for my star pupil and one for a guest like yourself. The coffee, you don't owe anything? No, 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 I can't. No, 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 no. I, can't ta- I can't take money for it. Okay, so you put it in the tzedakah box? No, I want to sponsor coffee tomorrow. Oh, t- you're going to be here tomorrow? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, coffee. that's for tomorrow's coffee. Okay, that's a good, I like that. Thank you for tomorrow. Okay, uh, Mr. Wolf has uh, generously and graciously offered to sponsor coffee for tomorrow. I will take it and I will have myself a nice breakfast somewhere. You know, I won't come here. You're going to be sitting here. Huh? Well, oh, you guys are going to be here. sitting here. You know, you'll have the sponsor here, but you may not have the coffee here. But anyway, uh, so what this gentleman has done, uh, not talking about Mr. Wolf, the scientist, is he's t- he used the Torah to prove that the world is 15 billion years old and he uses all kinds of interesting methods. And I'm going to be honest with you, I, I'm not scholarly enough to understand everything you wrote. It's on a higher level than I can see. But I did notice one thing. What I like to say sometimes is that uh, the, world, the world is 5,772 years old, and you'll have scientists say, no, it's, make sure it clicks completely down the cover. I don't, I don't think it did. No, no, no. The whole, yeah? Okay. I don't want it to spill on you. Okay. All right. Uh, scientists will say 5 billion, and another scientist will say 15 billion and, and 25,000. And the, by virtue of the fact that no, no two scientists will agree on the exact age of the, of the universe, of the world, that proves itself that it's up for conjecture, that we really don't know. Uh, or that they don't agree. Or that they don't agree, you know. Everybody agrees that according to the way we keep the calendar, the world is 5,772 years old, and we know the exact second, to the second, literally to the second. And uh, so um, even this even this writer of the article, he himself contradicts himself in the article three times, which I found fascinating. He starts off saying the world is 15 billion years old. He ends off with saying that it's 16 billion years old. And then he goes and he says somewhere that it's approximately approximately a billion, a billion up or down, like a billion by him is, uh, you know, like not, not that important. Also, which I found very disturbing is that he says that we can actually prove Darwin's theory. Mm-hmm. And to me that's very scary. First of all, um, can you pass me the banana? Yeah, there, there are some bananas here I brought for everybody. I had no intention of doing this. But it's scary to me if Darwin's theory is true. That would mean that there was something that motivated me to buy this banana today. And I would not like to think that my great-great-grandparents were uh, apes or something, so, or monkeys. So, uh, I, uh, so in general, I'm very uh, disenchanted with those type of articles. We don't need the Torah to prove scientists, as I said before. It's an, it's an interesting uh, comment that he, that he makes, and it makes for good reading. But for somebody, for somebody to take something like that too seriously, it almost will justify anything that you want to do, which is against the Torah, and proving that it is not against the Torah. And you can take even the, you know, years ago they said that you can't eat pork because it causes trichinosis, but now with the process, you know, you're allowed to eat it, and they'll come up with some way to proving it from the Torah that now it's acceptable. You can do that, and it leads you down the wrong path. So I do want to thank that individual for bringing me this article, but I think uh, we should uh, proceed with something like that with great caution. You finish your coffee already? I did, though. Huh? The way I drink coffee. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so let's talk about Krishna. 
Krishna is one of the most important prayers of the day, and I just want to read to you the first line of the Aloha of Krishna. It says, um, it says, Yikra Krishna Bekavona Beema Beira Bereses Vizaya. And in Swahili, that means you should read the Krishna with kavana, that means with great intent, and you should concentration. Be'ema, with awe. Be'ira, with fear. Be'reses, with trembling. Vizaya, and with sweat. It basically, you get the idea. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very awesome prayer, and uh, not to be taken lightly, and when you're when you're doing, when you're doing the, the, when you're davening in general, you should not be busy with other things. I know I'm guilty of, of looking at my phone or, or other things, uh, and you really have to concentrate on the whole davening. Uh, even though we have, there's a machlokas in the in the Gemara. We find that all over whether mitzvah tzarich is kavan or not. Does a mitzvah need intent or not? When if somebody's blowing shofar do you, and you hear it, do you have to concentrate on it, or is it enough that you heard it? When you're doing any mitzvah, when you're picking up the lul of an esrik and shaking it, do you really have to have intent that you're doing it because you want to do a mitzvah, or if it's laying on the table and you picked it up because you needed the place, you know, by virtue of the fact that you now held it in your hand already, were you yotz of the mitzvah? I think the intent comes first. I'm saying, but do you need the intent? I think you do. You think, he thinks he does. So certainly 50% of the, of the rabbis probably agree with you. 50% say you don't need a tent, and there's no clear-cut answer, and in different cases there are different uh, applications of that aloha. But if you go up to a Baal Street or something in your house, mm -hmm. it doesn't know which mitzvah the Torah says about Abamina, and he doesn't know all the things that you know. And he does the same thing that you're doing. You can't say that he's doing it with kavana. Mm -hmm. Same kavana as you're doing it. You see okay. that kavana means just, with intent. He, yeah. He's yeah. just doing it because you told him that this is um, something, whatever. But he doesn't have nearly the intent that the rabbi has or that you have. You understand it so much better. So is that intent so much part of the mitzvah? The mitzvah is just shaking the roof. Same thing with Shabbos, Nehru Shabbos, and whatever. You tell someone to do something that doesn't understand as much as you. Do they have the same, do they do the same mitzvah as you did? And Sometimes a Belshua could have more intent than the person that's been doing it all their no, life. And so what we're discussing, does someone have to understand as much as someone else in order to do something? Or could uh, somebody, or the mitzvah is just doing it without necessarily understanding what you're doing? Because... Somebody may not have the capability of understanding. So why should they be? Why should their okay, intent? Why, right. You know, why should their intent be? I see that. Yeah. Why should so, their intent be? So judged? probably that's why those feel that as long as you did the thing, like you give it to Yeah. At the end of the day, the money is in the in the bucket, right? How much? How much? How much intention do you have to have that one do mitz It's pretty much the road you walk by. Your you money is in there. Your right. money is in there. So is is the idea that. The action has to be done, or a lot of it is about the right. But certainly, by Krishna, it's very important. Where the whole, the whole uh, essence of Krishna is to accept upon yourself Kabbalas Olmata Shemayim, where you have to accept upon yourself the uh, the yoke and the and the kingship of of God. You you know, it's it's important that we understand it's not that. My share. It's not my share, but you have the same problem with the sphere. We say the night. Tonight's 49, and you didn't really mean that, not for any, yeah. tonight's 30 days in Sphere. So I was like, how many days in Sphere is tonight? You say 30. Right. So you're not going to make a bach anymore, because you said it was 30. Mm -hmm. But you didn't really mean to count tonight, you just mentioned that it's tonight. Mm -hmm. So no, you're way, very careful, people answer that question, instead of saying tonight is 30, they say last night. Yeah, you know, I have that issue with my wife sometimes, I'll ask her what's for dinner. She'll say, yesterday was chicken. You know, because you don't know how to say what you have. Anyway, if you read through Krishna, it says, Shema Yisrael Hashem Lakein Hashem Achad, and then 
you answer Baruch Shem Kavod Machus Alolam. But that, by the way, uh, the reason you answer that and you answer it quietly, that's taken from when when Yaakov, when Jacob called the twelve tribes and and he 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 said that verse Shema Yisrael, and and they answered Baruch Shem Kavod Machus Alolam. But except on Yom Kippur, where we we announce to the world that. There is a God, and He's the only God, and He rules over us, and He and He judges us. That's when the whole congregation, in unison, uh, says that verse, which this, which is in small letters, right after the Shema. I mean, they say that out loud. Now it says, it says, "I have to." It says, "I have to." Shem lekech v'chol avav v'chol nafsh You should love, get your God, with all your heart, with all, with all your soul, and with all your money. Uh, with all your possessions, and uh, sometimes, okay, I guess we'll continue that tomorrow. Thank you for coming. Okay, there are bananas here if anybody wishes. Okay, bye.